This is Earth Files, the award-winning news site with the latest updates in science, environment, and real X-Files. Podcasting in-depth reports beyond the 6 o'clock news by Emmy Award-winning journalist Linda Moulton Howe. The first phone calls I made to law enforcement ranchers and fellow journalists about the animal mutilation mystery was in early September 1979, 28 years ago. I was director of special projects at the CBS TV station in Denver, Colorado, where I produced documentaries, live studio audience broadcasts, and news updates about science and the environment. That summer of 1979, Hundreds of animals, ranging from cattle and horses to goats, sheep, and wild game such as deer and elk, were found with the same pattern of bloodless excisions from their bodies without signs of struggle or tracks, not even their own tracks. I remember being with one sheriff in northern Colorado at the scene of a fresh mutilated cow when he found a quarter-inch wide hole about an inch deep where the right shoulder joined up with the cow's neck. The sheriff stuck his pen in the hole and said to me, This is not a bullet hole. In the nearly three decades since, I have investigated dozens of fresh mutilations and several have had an odd quarter inch by about one inch deep hole in the chest and neck area that have never been explained. Further, in northern New Mexico, on October 1, 2006, A red Angus bull was found with one of its eyes, the genitals, and anus surgically removed without blood. On both sides of the bull's ribcage, there were three round circles impressed into the hide, as if something had clamped the bull. Those trio of circles on either side of the Canholon, New Mexico, bull's ribcages, and the puncture holes might finally be explained by an eyewitness who emailed me in late June 2007 about an encounter he has never discussed with anyone until now because he said, I did not think anyone would believe me. Reverend John Click, ordained minister in the Council Bluffs Iowa Baptist Church, was born in 1960 in Wichita, Kansas. He entered the U.S. Marines out of high school in 1976 to 1979, followed by one year in Marine Reserves. During the Carter administration, he flew as a Marine security guard on Air Force One. Then, for 16 years, he worked as a firefighter and paramedic. He received medical training at Wichita State University and an emergency medical technology degree from Kansas University Medical School in 1985. After suffering a physical injury, in 1996, John Click retired to driving trucks for FECUS, a division of KMJ Trucking. Then, in 2006, he became an ordained minister who works part-time in a Council Bluffs, Iowa Baptist Church. To pay bills, he also continues his trucking experience for an armored service that transports money for Federal Reserve banks. A decade ago, in August of either 1996 or 1997, between 7.30 and 8 p.m., He was in an 18-wheeler semi-truck traveling from Garden City, Kansas to Grand Island, Nebraska to let off a load of cargo. He had moved across several highways and had reached Highway 4 in Nebraska, used mainly by local farmers. On Highway 4 going east between Upland and Campbell, Nebraska, John Click saw a bright light above a pasture where what he called an unearthly creature like a crab-scorpion combined, was on the back of a cow, bellowing in pain. It was still light out, and I was just driving down the highway, and the first thing that caught my eye was this kind of a, and I don't really know how to describe it, it was a bright light, but yet it wasn't like you were looking at a light bulb. It was just a kind of a ball of light. I caught it out of the corner of my eye. And uh, what color? It was a uh, oh, kind of a palish, whitish, yellowish color. Mm-hmm. Big or small? And it was, um, I'd say, probably about ten feet across. And how high above the ground? It appeared to be about 
maybe 10 or 15 feet above the treetops. 10 or 15 feet above the treetops and about how far from where you are in your truck? I'd say about 100 to 150 yards out in the field. And is it stationary or moving? It's just sitting there. Can you see light reflecting on the trees below it? Well, actually, the trees were probably about 75 yards from the road, and this was on out in the open field. Um, but, I, you know, I didn't notice any light coming to the ground or anything like that. And, uh, and I looked at it, and then I kind of glanced down, and I saw some cattle along the fence there along the road. And they were probably about, I'm going to say, maybe one or two yards from the fence. Mm-hmm. And I'm driving along, and, and I looked out, and I saw that, and I thought, yeah, that's kind of weird. And I looked back at the road, and I looked back, and when I looked back, I saw this. <laughs> uh, the only way I can describe it is it, it looked like a cross between a crab and a scorpion type thing. But this cow, it probably was a good 1,200-pound cow. Mm-hmm. So it was a big cow, and this thing covered, I'd say, about from half its back up to its neck, you know, where it starts in the back. Right. Was it completely just on top of the cow? Yeah, I mean, it was just laying on top of it, but but the legs were like about halfway down it. Like these three legs were over the back, and one was kind of shorter and on the back towards the rear. Mm -hmm. So I hit the brakes back the truck up, and, and when I did, there was this, and I don't know how to describe it other than like a tail that had curved up over this, whatever it was, and it disappeared on the other side of the cow's neck, but the cow had his head kind of back and turned to the side, and its mouth was open, mm-hmm. and it was making a weird noise, like it didn't like it at all. Like crying and bellowing? Yeah, like as in pain, and I thought, what the heck is this? And it was a uh, palish red color. When you braked your truck because of what you're seeing, the creature thing on top of the cow didn't try to move away or hide on the other side of the cow because you had now stopped. No, it it didn't seem to care at all. (laughs) And that's what was kind of making me, I was like, what the heck? So because I could still see it in my mirror, so I put the truck in reverse and backed up. And when I got even with it, I looked out the window, and I could see that tail-like thing stuck. But it wasn't like in the neck. It was more the way the cow's head was back and everything. It was more like down by the shoulder where the neck and shoulder connect. Mm -hmm. Couldn't believe what I was seeing. And then I could see like a pinkish fluid running through this tail-like object. The light kind of it started moving. I put the truck in gear and took off down Highway uh, 4 there. And that was where I saw this was between Upland, Nebraska, and Campbell, Nebraska. So I think it's about a 12-mile stretch in there or something like that. And it was about halfway in between there. So I got kind of scared then because I didn't know what I was looking at. This thing, well, looked like something from not of this planet Mm -hmm. because I'd never seen anything like it. But that light that I saw out in the field had moved around to where I could see it through my windshield, but it was still at kind of a 45-degree angle. And it raised up, and when it did, I thought, "Eh, it's time for me to get out of here. Hmm. So... I took off down uh, Highway 4, and it followed me, the light, and it switched sides of the truck, but I never saw it, never went in front of the windshield. I mean, I'd see it out my driver's window, and then I wouldn't see it, and then all of a sudden I'd see it out the passenger's window. As if the light were pacing with your truck. Right, and I'm getting a little more worried and picking more speed up, and I'm on my CB, but I can't get anybody to talk back to me. And I'd been talking to a couple guys before that, 
but it was just staticky. I couldn't get anybody to answer me or anything. So I took off down Highway 4, and it followed me till I made the turn onto Highway 281 north. And when I got to Blue Hill, I didn't see the light anymore. And so I went on, and I made my delivery at Grand Island, and I came back the same way and uh, turned on Highway 4, and, and by now it was dark, but I had a good flashlight, one of those Q-beam-type lights. And I was shining it out in the field and stuff between Campbell and Upland, and I couldn't find that cow anywhere. But I remember the feeling I got was that this thing was, was hurting the cow. I felt sorry for the cow, tossing his head back like he was wanting it off of him and just making this god-awful noise. But that's what I saw. To this day, I still don't know what it was. Could we go back now to the detail as much as you can? Describe why you thought it looked like a combination of a scorpion and a crab. Uh, Well, because it, you know how crab legs look? That's kind of what the legs looked like. At first, I thought it looked like a kind of like a giant spider. But the more I thought about it, I thought, those legs were bigger, they were thicker, they were more like crab legs. And then when I saw that tail or whatever it was up over the top and into the cow's neck or wherever it went in at, because I couldn't see because that was on the other side of the cow's head, but it appeared that it went in probably at where the shoulder attaches to the neck. I thought, man, that's like a scorpion. I just put the two together that it looked kind of like a cross between a crab, and a scorpion. Now, can you describe the size as best you remember of this tail that swung up over the crab-like creature on the back of the cow? Um, I'm going to say it was probably at least as big around as, as my index finger. Oh, so quite thin then. Yeah, it wasn't like a great big huge thing. But more like looking at the end of something like a stingray tail or even... Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. And it could have been an artificial mechanical tube? It could have been, I suppose. It looked alive to me. Okay, and I'm asking this in terms of this color. You said that the thing looked sort of reddish. Was this tail reddish as well that was coming up over into the cow's neck? Yeah, it was it was all one color. Um, it was kind of a pale yellowish, but it had some kind of red to it. But I, I do remember that when I backed up, the um, now the tail, I'm not sure where it was at when I first saw this thing on the cow. But by the time I'd got stopped and backed up, it was up over this thing and into the cow. And But I do remember seeing a reddish looking kind of fluid flowing through this. almost looked like it was, the only way I can describe it is, is that it looked like this thing was drinking this cow's blood. Which means that whatever the tail was, it had to be translucent for you to see fluid going through it. Yeah, I mean, I could see movement. And this thing was kind of, I don't want to say pulsating, but it was like it was breathing or something. I mean, you could see it, the the body of it moving. Mm Mm-hmm. So that's what I mean by it It looked like it was alive. I mean, because it looked like it was breathing or sucking or something. I'm not sure what it was doing. But I didn't see any eyes or anything like that. I mean, it it was pretty attached. I mean, I don't think if the cow took off running that it was going to shake it off. Because it almost looked like those crab leg looking things. You know how the crab legs have like the spiny points on them? Right. Yeah, it looked like it was dug into the cow. I mean, it didn't look like it was going anywhere. From, you said, 100 yards, you could see all this? No, the light that I saw was about 100, 150 yards out into the field. But the cow, I was on the highway, and then there was uh, like a little bar ditch that was probably maybe, you know, maybe 10 feet across. Then there was the fence, and then the cow was about three feet on the other side of that. So I was looking at the cow and this thing at a distance of maybe 25 feet maximum. And even when you backed up right yeah, to it? Yeah, it didn't seem to bother it at all. <laughs> and that's what started me getting kind of worried. I figured when I backed up, it'd be gone, you know, but nope, it was still there. So you are watching 
from only 25 feet away, so you could see this thing in very clear detail. Oh, yeah. And the light is definitely high enough that you can see all of the details of this creature. Oh, yeah. But you had never seen anything like it before in Earth life. No. No, I've, I've been scuba diving and all kinds of things, and I've, uh, I've never encountered anything quite like that. <laughs> What did the creature look like that had these legs hooked into the cow? It was uh, weird looking. Um, it didn't look hairy or anything like that. I mean, it looked smooth, kind of like human skin, only with that kind of opaque, yellowish, reddish color. That's the only way I know how to describe it. I mean, I didn't see any hair on it or... It was weird. And the shape? It covered the whole cow's back, but it appeared to me to be kind of, uh, from what I could see, it was kind of wide in the back and then came kind of straight up the back of the cow and then kind of came around, kind of a roundish in the front, laying on the cow's neck. So it was, I would say, oh, about the only thing I can really... Compare it to would be a football that somebody cut the back off of, <laughs> if that makes sense. I mean, okay, a football that the back is cut off of one end, right? With the four legs, three about the same length and one shorter, coming out of this football shape on top, right? And that it looked like human skin, but yellowish red. Yeah, it was more yellow than red. And is the tail? coming from the back part that we would say was the cutoff part of the football. Right, like from underneath that. It kind of went down in the back, in the middle of this thing, like between the legs right in there, it was kind of bumped up and then came down in the front again. Mm -hmm. Just kind of like a blob sitting <laughs> sitting on there, but, but the legs came out. But they didn't look jointed, that was the other thing. I don't remember it looking like the joints of a crab's legs, you know, they were just kind of rounded and in there. And did you think of a crab because a crab's legs are sort of reddish and yellow-white? Yeah, and the way they were stuck in. The legs reminded me of like a king crab, you know, because they're bigger and they're, they've got that sharp point on the end. And you could tell it was like gripping it, hanging on. I uh, just did an investigation two months ago on a mutilated cow that was found up in Canjilan in northern New Mexico. The photographs show three circular impressions on each side of the rib cage. The rancher had never seen it before, and now I am wondering, would those possibly be where the legs of this, whatever this creature is, were clamped on to that cow in northern New Mexico? It could be. I mean, it, because it didn't look like they were deeply in, but like it was hanging on. That's the only way I can describe it. And why did you leave the scene? In other words, are you sitting in your truck trying to raise somebody on your CB radio while you are 25 feet from this? No, I was pretty um, fixated on what was going on. I was more curious than I was scared at first. And then when I saw what was going on and got a good look, then I started getting a little worried. And, um, and then when the light moved and kind of got out where I could see it at a 45-degree angle through my windshield, I thought, now, wait a minute. <laughs> Something's going on here. just had this overwhelming feeling that I shouldn't be there. Now, some people listening might think, why didn't he get out of the truck and approach that fence and try to aggressively interact with what was happening? If I would have had a weapon with me at the time, I probably would have. But I didn't have a weapon, and this thing was big, and I didn't like what it was doing to the cow. <laughs> and I didn't want to be next. Right. And the cow didn't try to run away or move or anything? Well, by the time I backed up, he was trying to walk forward, but he was kind of stumbling, and he was making a god-awful noise. I'd never heard a cow make that kind of noise before, but it sounded like he was in pain. 
there were some other cows out there that had taken off. They were running away from the scene? Right. When you say a he, could you see for sure that this was a male cow and not a female? I said he, but I'm pretty sure it was a female. Did any other trucks or cars slow down around you? Now, that's a pretty deserted highway. I mean, that's why I was running it, because I was running short on time. Highway 4 is a pretty deserted highway. I mean, just mainly the farmers use it, and so it doesn't get a lot of traffic. And would you please repeat again exactly where you think this particular pasture was? Um, It was between Upland, Nebraska, and Campbell, Nebraska, on Highway 4. Did you call the police or any authorities? No, I didn't because, mainly because I didn't think they'd believe me. It's a sad comment on the world, isn't it? Yeah, well, and had I been able to find the cow, and if the cow would have been down when I came back by, I probably would have, but I couldn't find it. So Mm -hmm. I don't know if it wandered off or something picked it up. I'm not sure what happened. Over the past quarter century or more, There have been links between unusual animal deaths known as mutilations around the world in both hemispheres to what our government's own documents refer to as extraterrestrial biological entities. Uh And that the perpetrators of these unusual animal deaths are non-human creatures. What is your reaction to that as the explanation for perhaps what you saw and for what other people have seen in terms of these beams of light shining down on animals. You know, I've uh, got a pretty open mind to that. And, uh, well, I know what I saw. There wasn't any species that's here on Earth that I know of. And did you associate that creature in your own intuitive gut there with that light that was above the tree line? Yeah, they worked together. I had this feeling... Especially when the light was following me, I thought, oh my goodness, they're going to get rid of the witness. (laughs) That That was my first thought. You are a practicing reverend now in 2007. Why do you think religions and governments seem to be so protective, have so many policies of denial, allegedly in the interest of national security, to keep the media and the public from facts such as what you yourself have seen, that there is an extraterrestrial link to worldwide animal mutilations? Well, I think the reason I think that they um, try to deny all this is because, one, we've already made contact. Two, we're already sharing information. And three, I think they feel that we're not capable of handling the information, that it would cause a a mass hysteria. So I I think that our government thinks that we can't handle the truth. What do you think? I think we can. There's been a lot of movies out that deal with extraterrestrials and stuff here lately, and pretty soon they're going to make it known that they're around. It's a mass hysteria. It's what they're worried about. Right. Thanks for listening to this Earth Files podcast from the edges of science, environment, and real X-Files. Go to www.earthfiles.com to see more than a thousand Earth Files reports with photographs, drawings, and documents. And visit Earth Files every day, every week, for new reports and new podcasts. That's www.earthfiles.com. 